I wanted to make this video, first of all, because I think there's a lot of people that have a distorted perception of what I do, maybe based on sound bites or based on headlines of articles that are disparaging. Um, the podcast has been accused of spreading dangerous misinformation, specifically about two episodes, one with uh, Dr. Peter McCullough and one with Dr. Robert Malone. Dr. Peter McCullough is a cardiologist and he is the most published physician in his field in history. Dr. Robert Malone owns nine patents on the creation of mRNA vaccine technology and is at least partially responsible for the creation of the technology that led to mRNA vaccines. Both these people are very highly credentialed, very intelligent, very accomplished people and they have an opinion that's different from the mainstream narrative. I wanted to hear what their opinion is. Uh, they, those episodes were labeled as being dangerous. They had dangerous misinformation in them. The problem I have with the term misinformation, especially today, is that many of the things that we thought of as misinformation just a short while ago are now accepted as fact. Like for instance, eight months ago, if you said, if you get vaccinated, you can still catch COVID and you can still spread COVID you would be removed from social media. They would, they would ban you from certain platforms. Now, that's accepted as fact. If you said, I don't think cloth masks work, you would be banned from social media. Now, that's openly and repeatedly stated on CNN. If you said, I think it's possible that COVID-19 came from a lab, you'd be banned from many social media platforms. Now, that's on the cover of Newsweek. I do not know if they're right. I don't know because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. I'm just a person who sits down and talks to people and has conversations with them. Do I get things wrong? Absolutely, I get things wrong, but I try to correct them. I'm interested in finding out what the truth is. And I'm interested in having interesting conversations with people that have differing opinions. I had Dr. Dr. Michael Osterholm on at the very beginning of the pandemic. Um, he is on President Biden's COVID-19 advisory board. Joe Rogan's not a right winger. It's not like they can say, oh, no. he's a scary QAnon character. He's certainly not. He seems pretty apolitical, pretty much a centrist. They simply hate him because he asks obvious questions. Or am I missing something? Uh, you're, you're not missing something. You know, he's... He is someone who, who, who's curious. He encourages dialogue. Of course, he's got his own opinions about things, but he can't be put in a box and he can't be controlled. Uh, again, yeah. and this, this goes to a bigger point here, Tucker, that we're, we're facing right now with the prospect of a, of a Supreme Court vacancy. The qualification of a Supreme Court justice, the foremost and most important quality, must be someone who is committed to upholding our Constitution, who is committed yes. to upholding the freedoms we are guaranteed in that Constitution, freedom of speech, civil liberties, and so on, not being chosen based on their gender, their sex, their race, or even their politics. We need to be looking for a Supreme Court justice who is committed and has a track track record of upholding our constitution that's it i i always laugh when you say things like that because i always wonder you know why why do they hate tulsi gabbard so much because like <laughs> joe rogan you're a threat because you defend the essential the ancient american values that the country was based on you do it in a very reasonable way that's nonpartisan, and that's the threat and so i appreciate you're doing that once again on our show thank you tulsi gabbard thanks you can never be woke enough that's the problem it keeps going it keeps right. going further and further and further down the line. And if you get that to the point where you capitulate, where you agree to all these demands, it will eventually get to straight white men are not allowed to talk. Right. Because it's your privilege to express yourself when other people of color have been silenced throughout history. It, it will be you're not allowed to go outside because so many people were imprisoned for so many years. I mean, I'm not joking. No, I, I know. I know. It really will get there. It's that crazy. You yeah. know, we just got to be nice to each other, man. And th there's a lot of people that are taking advantage of this weirdness in our culture, and then that becomes their thing. Their thing is calling people out for their privilege, calling people out for their position. You know, it's uh, fucking crazy times. Yeah. Is that in, in many ways like a lot of people who are anti-Western capitalism are also the only they will find that capitalism and Western capitalism in particular is the only culture that has embraced the acceptance of people yeah, right. 
like transgender people, people who are gay, people who are marginalized. Uh, I mean, Western capitalist society is one of the very few cultures that openly abhors racism. Right, right, right. Well, and these people are anti-capitalist on their iPhones. <laughs> right, you don't get to do that. Right, it's it's a performative contradiction. That's so that's so important. Yeah, they're on their iPhones while they're flying. Yeah, yeah. It's while like well, I'm anti-capitalist. It's like, well, actually, no, you're not. You're just deeply confused. That's like being uh, a black white supremacist. But actually, that's possible now. Dude. They're saying that. Oh yeah. Anytime a black person says anything that the, like doesn't go with the democratic narrative, they said that person's carrying water for white supremacists. Oh, it's it's unbelievable. They're out of their fucking mind. That you lady that was the, uh, the the new lieutenant governor of uh, Virginia, that uh, is a black woman who uh, she she's uh, sponsored by the NRA. I mean, I don't know what her, all of her accolades are, but incredibly articulate lady powerful woman they're they're saying that her becoming the lieutenant governor is a victory for white supremacy i read that i read and that on she's Twitter. a black woman she's a black woman when the larry elder was running for governor of california they said he's the black face of white supremacy <laughs> what what are you saying what the fuck are you saying like you could disagree with the man's politics, but that white supremacy is like a a stamp they like to put on as many things as they can. Yeah, okay, this so, looks like a Donnell Rawlings character as Jamel well. Jamel Hill says it's say not that. the messaging, folks. This country simply loves white supremacy, and this is because of the victory in Virginia of by the Republican, Republican Party. But yeah. the the fucking governor of Virginia was doing a shitty job. The people voted; they didn't like him. They didn't understand. What was going on with the way the there were the, the school systems handling certain issues? She was Jamaican in the Marines, so she's an immigrant. Oh, I like came to this that. country. Uh, she said this this country has done so much for me. I was willing willing to die for this country. Wow. She said, a Marine Corps veteran said in her speech, and she won. Youngkin. Yeah. Yep. Youngkin is the man, and she is the lieutenant governor. So she's like the it's like the vice president. I love this. Amazing. Amazing. And a, a, vet, a veteran and a Republican and an immigrant. And by the way, very few people are more anti-communist and anti-Marxist than people who've come from communist countries. You want to hear someone who's a fucking anti-Marxist, anti-communist? Uh -uh. Talk to someone who's been from Russia. Those fucking people, anybody who's been from the, the Eastern Europe, oh. they don't want to hear none of that bullshit. They yeah. fucking, they they hate it. When and they you have, see these college kids talk about Marxism has never been done correctly, they're like, fuck you. You know, our, our country lost millions of people because Michelle Obama and Harris. Harris comes back as the vice president. Michelle Obama is the president. We get a double dose of diversity. They'll win. Let's go they'll, champ. They'll win. And then who's on the Republican side? DeSantis? Trump and DeSantis. Together. They have to make a super team. It's the only way they win. Interesting. That's the only way they win. Super team. Trump comes out as the president. Yeah, if, if Michelle Obama, I, I really believe if yeah. Michelle Obama runs, she might. She win. wins. Yeah, I think she wins. She's good. She's great. Yeah, she's, she's intelligent. Yeah. she's articulate. She's right. the wife of the best president that we right. have had right. in our lifetime in right. terms of like a representative of yeah. an intelligent, sure. articulate people. Yeah. That, I think she, she could win.